What's up designers and welcome back to Rempton Games. In today's episode of Game Designer Spotlight, we're going to be looking at the career and design philosophy of one of my favorite designers, Masahiro Sakurai. Best known as the creator of the Kirby and Smash Brothers series, Sakurai has a very unique perspective on game design that has served him well over his three decades of game development. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we dig into Sakurai's game design philosophy and everything we can learn from it, let's take a brief look at his illustrious career as a designer and director. Sakurai was born on August 3rd, 1970 in Tokyo, Japan, and was interested in games from a very young age. By the time Sakurai was in high school, he had already decided to pursue game development as a career, and for two years he worked part-time, spending all of his money and spare time buying and playing games. Even from this early age, Sakurai was a true student of game design. He not only played a prodigious amount of games, but he even intentionally sought out and played games that he didn't like or didn't find interesting because he thought that he could learn the most about game design by learning from the mistakes of others. His hard work paid off when, at the age of only 19, Sakurai was hired by HAL Laboratories and quickly began work on his first title, Kirby's Dreamland, which was released for the Game Boy in 1992. This game introduced the character of Kirby and started off the game franchise that continues to this day. This game was followed by Kirby's Adventure for the NES in 1993 and Kirby Superstar for the Super NES in 1996. After making three Kirby games in a row, Sakurai wanted to try something different. He had an idea for a new type of fighting game, a four-player battle royale that he called Dragon King, the fighting game. Over the next few years, he developed this game mostly on his own, with then-president of HAL Laboratories Satoru Iwata working as a programmer part-time. While Sakurai liked the mechanics of this new fighting game, he realized that most fighting games have a difficult time quickly expressing the world and characters of the game, which is where he came up with the idea of using a cast of Nintendo characters rather than an original roster of fighters. He knew that his idea probably wouldn't be approved if he asked for it, so he didn't ask for permission until he already had a working prototype with a handful of characters already implemented. The idea was approved, and Super Smash Bros. was released for the Nintendo 64 in 1999. The original Super Smash Bros. was followed by the last game in the series, Super Smash Bros. Melee, which was released on the GameCube in 2001. Following this, Sakurai released a handful of other Kirby games over the next few years. However, by 2003, Sakurai was growing tired of HAL Laboratory's preoccupation with constantly pumping out sequels and he wanted to try something different, so he ended up leaving HAL Laboratories and working with Q Entertainment to make the puzzle game Meteos. Following Meteos' release, Sakurai formed his own development company, Sora Limited, in 2005, and was trying to figure out what to do next when at E3 2005, Satoru Iwata made a surprise announcement that there was going to be a new installment for the Super Smash Bros. series on the Wii. This announcement blindsided Sakurai, who had not been consulted about the decision but Satoru Iwata was able to convince him to work on this final game in the series by telling them that if he didn't, he would simply have to port Melee to the Wii and add Wi-Fi compatibility. As Iwata explains in his Iwata Asks series of interviews on Super Smash Bros. Brawl, it wasn't right, but you might even say I used it as a threat of sorts. In that same interview, Sakurai went on to express his enthusiasm at being given the opportunity to work on another game in the Super Smash Bros. series. I decided to accept the project, or accepted that I had no choice but to take it. We didn't have any staff as I was working freelance. I don't think you could have made things harder for ourselves if you tried. 
Development was reportedly very difficult, but because this was going to be the last Smash Bros game Sakurai would ever work on, he decided to go all out. Super Smash Bros. Brawl was released for the Wii in 2008, and it was a massive success, far outselling the previous entries in the series. Following Brawl, Sakurai was asked by Iwata to make something original for the new upcoming Nintendo 3DS hardware. He took this opportunity to revive a long-dead Nintendo franchise and make a game unlike anything he'd ever produced before, and the result was Kid Icarus Uprising. Following Uprising's release, Sakurai decided to go back to the Smash Bros. series and make one final game. Well, actually two. Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U and Super Smash Bros. for the 3DS, which were developed simultaneously and both released in 2014. Having finally made these last two games in the series, Sakurai was finally able to move on and do something completely different, working on Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for the Switch, which was released in 2018 and is definitely, absolutely, positively, maybe, the last one in the series. After releasing Smash Ultimate, Sakurai continued working on DLC for the game over the next few years. Now that all the DLC has been released, Sakurai has moved on to a new project, a YouTube channel which you should probably be watching instead of this video. Don't worry, I won't be offended. Huh, you decided to stick around. Well, I guess that means I should talk about Sakurai's approach to game design. The first thing to say about Sakurai as a designer is that he absolutely loves games. Remember earlier when I mentioned how he spent two years buying and playing every game he could get his hands on? Well, it turns out he basically never stopped doing that. Sakurai himself has stated that his apartment has literally thousands of games in it, and he's well known for being very skillful at a wide range of different games. In the same way that a great author needs to read lots of novels, or a great film director needs to watch tons of different films, Sakurai believes that the best way to learn about making games is to play as many games as possible in a wide range of styles. Perhaps it's no surprise then that Sakurai's most well-known series is basically a repository and love letter to the history of video games as a medium. However, despite his skill and experience as a gamer, one hallmark of all of Sakurai's games is being very beginner-friendly. This has been a guiding principle from the very beginning. The Kirby series is very beginner-friendly and easy to recommend to newer players, and it extends to pretty much every game he's ever made. However, being beginner-friendly doesn't mean he ignores skilled gamers in his designs either. One of the hallmarks of the Smash Brothers series is that, while it is easy to pick up for beginners, it also has an incredibly high skill ceiling and a thriving competitive community. Part of how he accomplishes this is through an emphasis on player choice. Sakurai strongly believes that every player should be allowed to decide how they want to play the game, and this philosophy has affected every aspect of the Smash Brothers series. Not only can players choose from a massive roster of characters that fit pretty much every imaginable playstyle, but the various different battle modes, stage options, difficulty settings in single player mode, and even music options lead to a very customizable experience for players. This emphasis on choice helps new players get into the game because certain battle modes are a lot more casual than others. While a new player will probably never beat a more experienced player on Battlefield with no items, they have a much better shot of pulling off the upset if they're playing on Pokemon Stadium with all items turned on. Letting players decide how they want to play is just one part of Sakurai's incredibly player-focused mentality. On previous episodes in this Game Designer Spotlight series, we've often seen designers say things like, I design the games I want to play, and if I find it fun, other players will find it fun too. However, while this approach has its merits, Sakurai sees things from a bit of a different angle. Gaming for me is not about making games that I want to play. 
Ultimately, gaming should be about the customers, and I couldn't figure out why there were so few games made with the customers in mind. Another common aspect of Sakurai's games is what he calls disassembly and reassembly. Basically, Sakurai tends not to make games that adhere to the traditional constraints of a genre. Instead, he tries to locate the kernel of fun at the center of that genre, this is the disassembly, and then build something new around that kernel, reassembly. For example, Sakurai wasn't a big fan of how traditional fighting games required players to memorize these difficult to input specific combos in order to be successful. Instead, he wanted to design a fighting game that was more ad-lib and had a greater emphasis on improvisation and reading your opponents. This inspired the cumulative damage mechanic of the Smash Bros series and is also why there are no hard-coded combos in the game other than as a specific gimmick for a few particular characters. Because Sakurai doesn't like being bound by the conventions of a traditional genre, his games often have control schemes that don't fit the standard layout. For example, with the racing game Kirby's Air Ride, there is no accelerator button, and the button that would normally be the accelerator is actually the brake. While it isn't his intention, these unusual control schemes can sometimes make his games a bit less approachable for players who are more experienced within the genre. However, he always tries to design his controls to best fit the specifics of the game that he's working on, and he believes that players will get used to the controls once they get over the initial weirdness. Another common theme in Sakurai's works is the relationship between risk and reward. Sakurai believes that part of the fun of games is taking risks, and believes that bigger risks should always come with bigger rewards, but also chances of bigger failures. While risk and reward are parts of lots of games, Sakurai sees these as some of the fundamental building blocks of game design and bakes them into pretty much every aspect of his games. One great example is the Fiend's Cauldron mechanic in Kid Icarus Uprising. In this system, you can pay hearts, a uh, form of in-game currency, to actually increase the difficulty of the game. Playing on a higher difficulty means you can get better weapons and loot drops, but if you fail at this higher difficulty, you lose the hearts that you invested and the difficulty goes back down. This is a very elegant system, and similar difficulty systems have been used in the single-player modes of the more recent Smash games. Besides his love of games and his philosophy towards game design, there are two other things that make Sakurai one of the all-time greats in game design. His attention to detail and his work ethic. Even before he begins working on a game, Sakurai is able to envision the game down to the tiniest detail and is constantly working to bring his vision to life. During an Iwata Asks interview, Sakurai reveals that many of the final smash attacks in Super Smash Bros. Brawl used audio that was actually recorded way back during development of the original Smash Bros., more than nine years before. Even that early on, he had a vision of what he wanted these attacks to be, he just had to wait until the hardware was advanced enough to make his vision a reality. However, while we can all learn a lot about game design from Masahiro Sakurai, one aspect of his career that should not be emulated is his work ethic. Long working hours is an unfortunate reality of the game development industry, and Masahiro Sakurai has been known to take this to an extreme. Working 7 day work weeks, giving up his entire social life, and even putting his health at risk by simply taking on too much responsibility for any single person. As a designer, Sakurai has taught me a lot, but if there was anything that I could teach him in return, it would be the ever important art of delegation. Well, that's all I have for this week. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to Masahiro Sakurai on creating games. Oh, and also this channel too, I guess. And join me next time for another installment of my TCG Design Academy series. Until then, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all next time.